Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Oh, they're doing it again. Yes, it seems like Harmonia Mundi is becoming the go-to label for horrid period performances of music that has no business being performed in period manner, like this one, for example. This is, this is the Beethoven Piano Concertos 2 and 5, with Christian Bezuidenhut. I, I, I think this guy's just terrible. <laughs> he's a terrible pianist or forte thingy or whatever he's doing. He sounds to me like one of those guys who picked up period instruments because he never could have made a career with a normal one. You know, I mean, that's me. I could be wrong. And, and we have the horrid Freiburger Baroque Orchestra which really has no business playing like middle period Beethoven. Get it? They're a Baroque orchestra. And the Baroque orchestra should play things that are Baroque, please. Um, I, I, under Pablo Harris Casado, who is sort of kind of a normal human being, but who's pretending not to be you know, for the sake of you know making records like this i i don't understand how anyone could bother anyway christian bezuidenhut seems to have discovered the authentic instrument that beethoven wrote all of his piano concertos for it's called the xylo marimba flugel and the xylo marimba flugel is a keyed version of something that sounds like a cross between a xylophone and a marimba hence xylo marimba flugel get it? It's, it's a dreadful sounding instrument for this music. It hasn't a shred of majesty. It has complete inability to play anything legato. And, and I have to say, I mean, they do some interesting things because of that. Things that would actually sound great if played on normal instruments, I suspect. For example, the slow movements of both concertos, but particularly that of the emperor, uh, you know, nice flowing tempos. Uh, you know, you don't have to play them in a state of complete stasis. I agree with this interpretively. I really do. I would love to hear a normal pianist do it because then you could spit out a beautiful cantabile line instead of plink, 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 plunk, plunk, plink, plunk, 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 plink, plunk, 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 You get the picture. Do you not? I mean, it, it, it's just, it, well, the other thing about about the Zwedenhut here is that he seems to think that that expressiveness is a function of distorting tempi. I mean, he, he pushes and pulls phrases at random, and, and especially in quick tempos, frankly, and it just sounds horrible. You know, the well, take the take the opening of the finale of the Emperor. Then it goes. Well, he goes. You might think it's not a big deal. It's not really. But if like Leopold Stokowski had done it, and he probably did, we would be like all horrified at the horrid, awful, terrible lapse in taste that that represents. Well, terrible, horrible lapses in tastes are what they are, and they know no period. And, you know, the thing about Bezuidenhut here is he just lacks taste. I guess that's the word. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just not tasteful playing. It's faux expressive. And the reason he's distorting the tempi and playing with agogics, as they call them in the biz, is because the instrument itself is so devoid of expressive possibilities. I mean, if you cannot, if you cannot create something that's affecting through tone, touch, timbre, then you start doing what harpsichordists do, which is fuddle with the tempo and mess around with the, you know, the, 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 the push me, pull you approach to phrasing because you have to make up for what the instrument otherwise lacks. I don't have a problem with that, for example, in harpsichord playing. And Bezuidenhut might say, well, see, there you go. It's appropriate to Beethoven because Beethoven's pianos were incapable of doing, if finding expressive nuances in any other way. 
Just so. That's why Beethoven bashed his pianos to smithereens and was always looking for better instruments that had a wider range of dynamics and a more beautiful legato. And let's not, let's not misunderstand each other. I have heard, I've played forte pianos that have beautiful singing legato tone and, 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 and a gorgeous a gorgeous sound throughout their register. I mean, some people like things that have very different sounds in different registers, and that's okay too, as long as it's a lovely sound, as long as it's a musical sound. But the Emperor Concerto has, has absolutely no business being played on an instrument of this diminutive size um, with its, its meager tone and in and an orchestra that's even worse. I mean, you've got a seven violins and firsts and seconds, and I mean, they sound so bloody anemic. It's just, it's just bad. It's not what the music wants. The music demands a certain nobility of stature. Even the second concerto, you know, which is Beethoven's first great concerto. Well, the second concerto, pardon me, is actually Beethoven's first concerto, and it's, it's a very early work. And it's not formally all that well organized, but it's full of enthusiasm and gusto and fireworks and stuff. There are no fireworks going off here. These are, these are, these are, you know, f f damp squib things, you know, it's like matches, and poof, you know, it's, it's just, it's just dreadful. Dreadful. I mean, the finale with all those jazzy syncopations and things, there's so much you can do with accent. And, and, and with, 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 you know, some smart, some smart phrasing. I mean, yeah, okay, you can ornament things a little bit here and there. But the bottom line, the bottom line for all this stuff is that it, the music has to sound like a young, fresh virtuoso, at least the second concerto, um, you know, really feeling his oats. And there are no oats here. There are no oats here. There's no grain. There's no body in any of these performances. They're just anemic and spineless and 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 mannered and ugh. oh dear why why do they bother what do they actually think they're achieving i wonder i really really wonder and by the way i i have to answer a certain criticism here because some people when i was talking about for example pierre monteux and his role as a an as an iconic figure in performance practice because he lived so long and knew so much you know from the 1880s up till 1960s you know people say well artists have a right to do things and make them sound different of course they do artists have a right to do whatever they want and i have the right to tell you that they sound like shit doing it so here you go <laughs> Case in point, Christian Bezuiden, who Pablo Harris Casado, the Freiburger Baroque Orchestra on Harmonia Mundi, destroying Beethoven's second and third piano concerti for no sensible purpose. It's difference for its own sake, not for a musical end, any rewarding, expressively pertinent musical end. <sighs> Keep on listening, friends. Take care.